Hi, it's Michelle Stone at Michelle Stone Masterpieces. Um, I'm coming to you today because I'm doing a, a project for um, elementary children. Um, it's, uh, we're focusing on secondary colors. And so primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, where secondary colors are orange, purple, and green. And so it's, um, it's a, for a class that I'm going to teach um, but I also like to put the video here just in case any of the kids are sick or that type of thing, or for even for, um, you know, for other people to watch on my YouTube channel. So, <laughs> um, we will learn, um, a little bit about art history. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Alexander Calder, who is a famous sculptor and also, um, painter. And he uh, did a piece. He did um, a work of art called Peace, and that's what we're going to do today. So I am a, um, an art teacher, an artist, a curator, and a therapeutic art life coach. So um, everything that you'll see on my channel has some type of benefit that you'll receive, um, whether it's the, you know, therapeutic art life practices, or whether it's um, children's classes, uh, with we're doing different types of art that I've got going on or whether you're even seeing an art exhibit at the Carolwood Cultural Center here in Tampa, Florida. So uh, without further ado, um, actually before that I'm going to tell you what supplies you need. So before we go to the paper, I have some watercolor paper. I have a, uh, um, a brush, a round brush. Looks like this. Let me see if I, there we go, round brush a pencil, um, watercolor paper is this, and some watercolors. This is my, my palette that I use at the school and an oil pastel. So just need a basic black oil pastel. So we will do the rest from there. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so paper can either be this way or this way. So this way is called landscape. This way is called portrait. So we want to place it uh, portrait and I have it on top of this. Uh, this is actually a mat board so that you guys could see it a little bit better. Um, the, I'm just basically going to do some, some like, so just like single lines and kind of do like a loop-de-loop -loop, like where I come up like this and then fill in some stuff. And so I'm going to do it initially with pencil and then I'm going to come back over it and, and work with the oil pastels. So um, again, the, this is Alexander Calder. It's, a, it's based upon a lithograph that he has done called Peace. And so I'm going to take my pencil and come and go like this. Okay. Can you, yeah, you can barely see that. Let me grab a darker pencil. I will go over this with watercolor and just, a, or with um, oil pastel in just a minute, but I think it's important for you guys to be able to see it. There we go. That's much better. Okay. I'm just going to trace over these lines. Just as I'm doing this. Okay. So there we've got that. We're going to add a couple other circles here and there. Um, and then we're going to come this way. Okay. 
Okay, so you see that one. And then I'm going to add some other circles um, within. So I'm going to do another one here in like the, the, the blank spaces. So I've got one there, one here, whoops, um, another one here, another one here. And the reason he calls it peace is because in the middle of the piece, he has a yin yang symbol. Um, I'm actually going to do a peace symbol. Yeah, I'm going to do a piece. Well, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'll just then that way because no, I'm being called to do a peace symbol. So a peace symbol is the circle. And we can uh, we can actually just kind of freehand this. And so we have two lines down the center, and then four lines diagonally. Now make sure that as you do these diagonally, that you go directly across and you come down here and down there like that. So we've got all these little squigglies. All right. So now we're going to come over it. Now that we've got that, we're going to come over it with our oil pastel. And if you are right-handed, I recommend that you go from right to left. If you are left-handed, I recommend that you go from left to right, simply because the oil pastel will smear. And, um, and we really don't want that. So I'm going to come down and then move across. And so, and I'm just going to trace over these pencil lines that I just did. And so, and the reason I'm using oil pastels is because this will create what is called a wax resist. Um, because an oil pastel has oil in it and oil and water. If, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase oil and water do not mix and it's true. So the oil pastel has like a resistant quality to the, the watercolor and it creates a barrier. So we're going to put color inside these little loops and then the water actually will not, the, the color from the, oil, the watercolor will actually not go beyond that. So it'll be a nice crisp and clean painting. Um, and so when we're doing the circles, make sure that we, that we connect the, the different lines. So um, our circles have to go all the way around. Otherwise, if they don't connect, then the watercolor will go outside of it. And we're, what we're looking for is a nice clean image. And for the colors to stay within inside the boundaries that we've that we've we've set. So then here I'm going to use on the, the inside of my peace sign, I'm going to use the edge. That way I get cleaner lines. There we go. Okay. That one. Okay, so I've got that and that. So everything on the side is done. And so now I'm going to come back up. And when I hold my paper, usually when you have watercolor paper, you tape it down. Um, that's not really necessary for this project. So I'm just going to hold it with my, my fingers and come and go ahead and trace it here. There we go. And as you use the oil pastel, the, um, the edge, depending upon which one you use, it will, um, the edge will start to wear down a little bit and that's okay too.
So see how I did the whole thing? And now I'm going to do this last, these last two circles. And then there's one more up here. So as I mentioned before, these oil pastels will stain, not stain, but they will smudge. Okay, so now I've got that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush um, into my water and I'm only going to focus on three colors. So I have my paper towel, so I have the orange, the green, on this particular palette I have a light green and a dark green to choose from, and then my purple is right here because it goes greens, blue, brown. So I'm going to start off with the orange. I just kind of put some water in my palette right here, and then just fill in different colors that I want. And again, I'm staying inside the lines. Um, if you do end up picking up some of the watercolor, some of the oil pastels, um, just be careful not to, you can like dab it on the paper towel like I just did. And so we're just adding this watercolor in here. Now the original painting is actually reds and blues, it, it's primary colors, but I thought, you know what, it would be fun to do secondary colors. So that's why we're, we're doing this with this particular um, type of painting. And so, and we've also already done, we've already studied the primary colors. We, we took a look at um, Piet Mondrian's pieces. Um, he has, if you're not familiar with Piet Mondrian, it's, um, he is a, a famous artist who also did primary colors, but he did um, more horizontal and vertical lines. So all you have to do is you can just like look him up and, and see what he did. So and, he, it, and it's funny because he, you know, was trained, was able to um, he was able to start off with the, like a professor, you know, as a professional, um, going to school and, you know, learning different techniques and everything. And so it's, his artwork was, he, he understood realism in a very big way before he moved on to the, um, the abstract work that he started. And he, he was actually one of the, the beginning artists in the um, abs, uh, what phrase am I looking for? The abstract, but like the abstract movement after um, cubism. So yeah, anyway, so I'm coming in and I'm just, I'm using the same color. I'm doing all of my oranges first and coming in and doing all of those. And if I need to go back in and add some more depth for the color, then I can totally do that. Like here, I'm looking at these and these are, um, they're starting to bleed out a little bit and not be so dark. And so it's important to me that, that they have nice rich pigment in them. And so the lighting, I'm seeing like a, there we go. I'm seeing because I, my light source is actually right here. This looks like I'm not filling those in, but I actually, they are full. Um, so just, just so you know. Okay. So now I'm going to do this one. Mm 
And then come around and this one. And I'm doing these based upon the color patches that were pretty much in the piece of artwork. If you if you do look up Alexander Calder, um, the lithograph piece, you'll find that this may not be 100% accurate, which of course it never, you know, I'm not trying to duplicate his work. I'm just trying to give the kids an example of it. But he, he's, he's one of the students that, or one of the artists that we're going to continue to study throughout this whole series of, of classes. So you see how I'm, how I'm going back in and kind of filling in these colors because I want them to be nice and deep and rich. So let me see. And then I'm also I'm wondering, I'm about to sneeze, bear with me. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Wait, pardon me. Thank you. Um, okay, so here we go. So I've got that. And so I think I'm going to come in and do this side. There we go. And even this side. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my brush. Actually, you know what? I think I need a little bit more here and a little bit more there. Okay, now I'm cleaning my brush. Now I'm going to come in and do let me see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do green. I'm going to use this darker green. Yep. And so, oh, that's a teal. Hold that thought. I'm not using that color. That's not the color I want. So guess what? So I'm going to come back in and soak that up. See how I'm doing that with my brush? I put in the wrong color. And with watercolor, you can just kind of come back in and literally, especially if it's still wet, if it's dry, you can still do it. It's not as effective. But see how I just totally soaked that back up. I used the, um, the green that has more teal to it, and that's not the color I wanted. So here, I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to need to do a couple layers of this, too, because this is not as green as I wanted it to be, which is OK. That's perfectly fine. So yeah, so that's um, I'm doing that. And there's a lot of negative space in this particular piece. And so what does negative space mean? So what I'm painting is positive space. It's space that it's things that are, are being um, filled in by color, right? So negative space is the contrast of that, the what is on the opposite side that allows it to kind of show through. So Um, that's all the white that's in the background. And so this particular piece, and, and this piece that we're creating right now is actually for an age group of, um, I, I'm teaching kindergarten, first and second, all in the same classroom. So um, for a homeschool class. And so that's what this, this is actually for that particular class. All right, and so now I've got, so now on the other side of my piece, I'm going to do this green here. Yep, and then here. Oh, 
awesome. Okay, so we've got that, 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 and that. Yeah, so now I'm going to come back in and fill in this extra. There we go. See how just adding, going back in and, and taking your brush, just kind of dabbing it back in there, gives it that extra pigment. Yeah, you can see the difference between that and that, right? Whoops, I keep, don't need any more water in my brush, do I? <laughs> All right, so here we go. So you can see that there. See, I'm doing it there too. And then just kind of adding. There we go. All right, so then my last one, I'm going to replace the color that's already there with purple. So here I come in, I'm going to bring in some, some purple. There we go. So I've got that and then this. And then I'm following right here, going along the outside. So, and then this, I'm going to come back in and add some more color here. And then a little bit more here. Fill this in. Yep. Okay. So see how just, just by doing these three colors, you can see the contrast of the, the secondary colors. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I'm liking the way that this is turning out with these secondary colors. So again, um, think about this. The primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. And so the secondary colors are the opposite, not the opposite, they're, um, they're the, the colors that's, like for example, if you take red and yellow, you make orange. If you take yellow and blue, you make green. And if you take red and um, blue, you make purple. And so that's what I mean by secondary colors. So I'm coming back in and I'm adding just a little bit more color to all of these to make them nice and uh, that have some juiciness to them. So there you go. All right, so there's that. There's my, my painting. And again, this is um, an Alexander Calder study um, with secondary colors. The name of the painting is called Peace. It's, um, it's actually a lithograph, I, I apologize. And so if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave them below. Um, I, I'd love to hear your, your responses and your thoughts about how the project came out for you. And if you um, are interested, if you like my classes, I will do more classes like this going forward as I continue to build my curriculum. 
So um, they'll be anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes and typically for elementary children age, or yeah, elementary children age. So usually I'm doing groups of kindergarten first and second, and then also third through fifth. So um, if you are interested in a lot more classes like this, um, please, uh, I invite you to subscribe below. And um, you could also click the bell. And every time I do more classes, uh, you'll, or even any of my other stuff, you know, We'll be able to see that and so um, one of the things that that I believe that art does is that it washes away the uh, Picasso used to say it, it, it washes away the the dirt of daily life and I like to say that it washes away the residue of daily life because it's kind of like when when you know you do dishes um, you get rid of the, the suds in the sink and so um, like with this, one of my favorite sayings is uh, color the residue of your day away. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys again and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.